Okay, so how do we compare CPUs? And there's really a, a number of different things we look at when we care, compare CPUs. And the first one I've got on here is the speed of the processor. Everyone is used to looking at that speed as the one thing that defines how fast your computer will go. And I will tell you, it's the worst thing to look at if you're only going to look at one thing. Uh, because um, you could have a fast processor in gigahertz that runs like poo. Um, so gigahertz means generally that the faster that frequency goes, the faster it can handle instructions but there are roadblocks that can get, it, get in the way of that. So it's not just about gigahertz, but it's the most common way most people look at and compare CPUs. This is Intel's list of CPUs released this year, just this year. In fact, it's not even a complete list of CPUs, but if you look at it, all of them on this list are socket 1200 CPUs, so the newest release from Intel is the socket 1200 P CPU. And you can see this huge list of different speeds as far as how fast they are, how fast that clock speed is, and that does not tell you how, that the fastest one in clock speed is also the fastest CPU. It's just one part of the puzzle. And if we were to go and look at this list, and this is a, a nice link here, this is all of them that came out in 2020. You can see all of them are 1200s except for this 2066 down here. The rest of them are all socket 1200 CPUs. And you can see there's a variance in clock speed from 3.4 gigahertz, no, this one's 3.1, all the way up to 5.3 right there gigahertz in our speeds. And again, that is not the entire picture. When it comes to AMDs, they have put out mostly AM4s on this list today. And I just got done saying TR4 is the fastest one. Um, but if we look at the speed of these processors, we can look that we're looking at AM4 sockets and TR4 sockets out this year. So those are the two. The difference is uh, not the speed in gigahertz between those. This one goes all the way up to 4.9, and it is an AM4 processor, and the ones that TRTR4 only go up to 4.3. So which one's faster? And we're gonna look at that in a little bit. But you can see all these, they only have two sockets that, count that they have been released this year for AMD. That's AM4 and the TR4 socket CPUs that came out this year. So that's it for the ones that are current. So one way to look at it is that clock speed. The next thing we look at, and we're gonna look at that same chart again, is the number of cores or processors that are on that chip as well. It used to be 20 years ago that a processor was one processor. You got one and then we got Two, and then we got four, and now some of these are all the way up to 64 core processors on a single CPU. What does that mean? It means it can do multiple things at one time. It doesn't mean a single thing is faster. It means when it's doing multiple things, it's faster. And so, so more cores may mean faster processing. It doesn't necessarily mean it's faster processing. For instance, if I'm playing a game and that game uses one core and that core is slow, it's not going to be fast. It uses two cores and the core is fast, but there's a bunch of other things going on on the computer, like your antivirus software running, you got Google Chrome in the background, you have multiple screens up with multiple things going on at the same time. It may not be faster. We have to look at multiple things together. So the speed is important. The number of cores is also important. I'm gonna take a quick stop right here. And let's just bring that up. Oh, it's not what I wanted to bring up. Actually, I could have, oh, no, no, no. There we go. So on this particular processor, that by the way, this is an older AMD 
eight core processor. That's a lie. AMD used to say, in fact, we got money back for this lie from AMD. There was a little class action lawsuit. This is not an eight core machine. It's a four core machine hyper threaded to eight processors, but there's only four cores on this particular processor. And then I'm gonna look down here and I'm gonna go to task manager show you how many things are currently running on my computer at one time and why cores being important. These apps are running and there's 27 apps running or I'm sorry five apps 27 different things going from Google Chrome, six from OBS Studio, three from Smart Notebook, two from Windows Explorer and then there's 78 other background processes all running on my computer right now. And that's where cores become important. The more things that are running in the background, and any more computers run tons of processes in the background, but the more things run in the background, the more additional cores may help you up to a point, but it doesn't mean it's gonna necessarily help uh, Quake run faster or some game run faster. I just aged myself with Quake, by the way. Um, but it means that if there's a lot of things going on at one time, that an individual CPU may be free to make that thing run faster, okay? So you can see how much CPU usage I'm getting from individual tasks. In fact, I can order by CPU. You can see OBS Studio, which is what's recording this, is using the most CPU usage at any one time. And then you can go down through that list and see how much. And some of these are, look like there's zero. There's obviously not zero, it's just too low to say. And then what things are consuming the most power from my power supply, you see all those things. So that's where cores become important because you've got lots of things going on in the background that you don't even know about. And the more cores you have, up to a point, um, the faster your main application may run. So we've got gigahertz processing speed, and then we've got cores, or how many of those gigahertz processing speeds can happen at the same time. Those are the first two parts of what makes a CPU run fast. I didn't go here, so you can see at this Celeron G5900, it's got a 3.4 gigahertz clock with two cores. And as I go down here, we've got some that are as many as, in fact, I can order by, sort by, no, I can't sort by cores. Okay, so I'm gonna look down here and that's where we see this 10 slash 20. This has 10 cores, but it's called hyper threading that lets it kind of do two things at once. Um, I look at the main core, hyper threading is a nice thing that may help. But the fastest one down here, by the way, it was never released. You can see right there, it was never released. So the, the most cores of any release processor from Intel is 10 cores with 20 logical processors through hyper-threading going on at the same time. On AMD, let's see if I can go to the AMD page without going back in there, I can go down here. And I've got on the Threadripper Pro 3995WX, 64 cores on that thing with they're hyper threaded so up to 128 it goes up to 4.2 gigahertz holy moly that's the tr4 socket and you can see this one actually it's probably the strx4 socket i don't know that this list is 100 percent correct and this other one has 164 and 128 cores on it. that's one other part of what makes a CPU fast, so we've got gigahertz, we've got cores. Those are the first two parts of the puzzle.